Welcome, everybody. This is episode three of Code and Coffee. Uh, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Energy Code Ace, for making this possible. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, um, thank you for logging in. Uh, this is a live show, and we do uh, record this so that you can watch this at future time. Uh, <clears throat> we will be going through a continuation of our residential new construction project uh, from episode one. I'm going to switch to my introduction screen so you guys can see my face here. Adjust my camera a little bit. All right, good. So, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Brian Selby. If you're not familiar uh, who I am, um, I'm one of the Energy Code Ace instructors. Um, this YouTube channel is something that uh, we put together as another way to uh, reach out to the community that, that does uh, energy code compliance here in California and give them an opportunity to um, see some more advanced training. So we've been able to do some very specific uh, modeling um, demonstrations. Today we're going to concentrate on advanced um, uh, HVAC systems and domestic hot water systems. So I've got three different scenarios for you. You can see in the bullet points there, we're going to be covering uh, different inputs uh, for system types and characteristics for HVAC systems. Uh, I've got a heat pump option. I've got a combined hydronic option, which we're going to be doing the in-floor heat. And then I'm going to talk about ductless mini splits. The uh, ductless mini split system really isn't appropriate for our, our case study house here, but uh, <clears throat> I'll give you some, uh, some input on that. We're also going to be looking at different uh, domestic hot water systems, the types and characteristics. So we're going to be looking at a heat pump water heater, what uh, the modeling inputs are for that, uh, solar thermal system, uh, as well as taking a look at the compact hot water distribution credit and see how that affects our model. So um, I'm going to be sharing different screens here. Uh, I've got an Energy Pro screen set up. I've got uh, my Blue Beam software, which is a way to mark up and measure from PDF plans. So those are you know, really cool um, uh, you know, software tools that you can use. I'm also going to be going to the AHRI directory. I'm going to uh, be popping into the um, Solar Rating and Certification Corporation directory uh, to get some information there. So, all right, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to my... Uh, um, screen here and just give you a summary of our project. Uh, so today's project is building off of the uh, simple new construction project we did in episode one. Episode two, we did uh, shading for that. In episode three, we're going to be working on these uh, HVAC systems. So um, if you remember, or if you're new to this, our HVAC system that we modeled in our um, episode one was a gas furnace with a split AC system. So what I've done is come up with a option to go all electric. So we're going to take a look at um, changing these values from a gas furnace uh, to a heat pump for the HVAC system and from a tankless gas water heater to a uh, um, heat pump water heater. So um, if you guys have any questions, <clears throat> feel free to ask. Lindsay is going to keep uh, me up to speed on <clears throat> the chat pod here. So uh, if I don't get to your question right away, uh, she'll bug me about it. So good. Let's go ahead and jump in. So uh, on your screen right now, you should be seeing the Energy Pro file from episode one, Code and Coffee. Um, we're going to start with our HVAC system. So here I am at the HVAC system. Uh, layer and uh, we're going to go in and take a look at modifying this to a heat pump. So you can see we've got our 92 AFUE furnace, 14 SEER, 11 EER air conditioner. I want to add a new um, uh, piece of equipment here. Um, I'm going to change this to a um, 8.2 HSPF heat pump. What I want to do is I want to input the minimum efficiency values um, that are allowed by the state and federal appliance efficiency regulations. 
so that my client has the most flexibility uh, further down the road. They can install whatever a, uh, heat pump system uh, they want to. So here we go. We've got our system type is a split DX system. Uh, we're changing from a heating type of gas furnace down to a uh, heat pump. So that's going to change some of the characteristics. Now you'll notice when we do that, we switch to a heat pump. Uh, we have a total system output, BTUs per hour, and an output at 17 degrees. Now, um, up till recently, uh, a lot of people have just been kind of putting in the same number as the output or um, making up a number, or they may have already gotten some uh, specifics from a manufacturer to uh, input that 17 degree rating. So what we want to do uh, here is I want to narrow down uh, a particular piece of equipment that I know is going to be within that range. So we're going to take a look at the AHRI directory. If you're not familiar where, with AHRI, um, you will be. Let me switch screens here. Um, <clears throat> AHRI certified directory is um, where you can go to find uh, particular products. Um, right now what we're going to do is we're going to search for residential products, uh, air conditioners and heat pumps. And I'm going to go over here to uh, uh, heat pumps and heat pump coils. So here's my strategy. I don't necessarily want to limit them to a specific make and model number, um, but I want to get the total output and 17 degree output fairly close. So what I'm what I've suggested here is to uh, search for um, some of the characteristics that we want to uh, for our minimum efficient furnace so uh, and air conditioner. So you'll see in here our quick search criteria. This is just kind of a, an easy tip here to to get you in the right range here. Um, I'm not going to worry about model numbers right now. What I'm going to do is set my cooling cooling capacity. Actually, I'm going to go with um, SEER and EER values. So I'm going to set my SEER at 14 SEER because I know that's the minimum efficiency um, air conditioner. I'm going to set the maximum at 14 SEER. My EER, uh, anything less than um, 54,000 BTUs. Uh, wait, uh, number doesn't quite come to my mind but uh, we want to be in the 12.2 EER range so we want to set that minimum to 12.2 the heating capacity I'm not really worried about the 47 degree heating capacity I'm worried about the 17 degree heating capacity um, based on some previous heat, uh, load calculations we've done here we're probably looking about a um, uh, about a 30,000 BTU um, 17 degree heating capacity for this in order to get uh, our total uh, BTU capacity uh, within the um, within the range here now the reason this is important um, just want to point out that uh, come 2019 code um, this is going to be a, a HERS verified measure if you exceed minimum 17 degree outputs you're gonna trigger a mandatory HERS verification so what I've done here is just run a simple search through HR directory. Um, I just want to find a piece of equipment that meets some minimum efficiencies and uh, gets me that 17 degree um, value. So you can see here, you know, we've got, I don't know, three or 400, uh, 218 records came back. So I'm not really particular on one uh, source or another, but um, let's take a look at this. We have a uh, a system down here 48,000 BTUs on a cooling capacity 14 sear 12.2 EER so we're we're good there um, the 47 degree or the high heat value is 46,000 BTUs we're at right at our 8.2 HSPF and our heating capacity at 17 degrees is 30,000 BTUs bingo we nailed it so let's take those values um, I'm gonna enter 46,000 BTUs for my total I'm going to enter 30,000 BTUs for my um, 17 degree heat. I'm going to switch back to my Energy Pro screen here. Lindsay, do we have any uh, any 
anything in the chat to respond to yet? Okay. Uh, well. So uh, 17 degree heat is uh, input is 30,000 BTUs. I'm gonna make sure and change my efficiency down to 8.2. Excuse me, I take a drink out of my uh, really cool energy code ace mug you guys see that mug there um, i'm going to give you an opportunity today um, to win one of these mugs um, what i'm going to do is take the person with the most chats um, i'm going to uh, get a hold of you and uh, email you uh, and get your mailing information so that might encourage you to increase your uh, your uh, chatting on the on the YouTube video okay so we're good on our heating uh, let's switch over to our cooling um, we've got a 48,000 BTU uh, output AC cooling capacity uh, sensible load usually about 70% of your um, your output um, if you're not familiar with these terms sensible load is the heat that you normally feel when you set the temperature at let's say 68 degrees uh, the latent heat is the amount of heat that's uh, in the uh, that is uh, in the moisture or in the uh, in the humidity in the air. And what this is talking about the system's ability to uh, extract that uh, that heat um, out of there. So uh, we're just looking at about um, seventy. Excuse me. What's the uh, what's the chat here? We got um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what Luke's question is getting at is uh, what's coming down the pipe with the 2019 standards is that they're going to set a minimum requirement for the 17 degree heat for a heat pump um, what happens is if that equipment isn't sized correctly um, it's going to end up being undersized so this is going to be a, a verification that um, if you uh, we're pushing for that they set some default values and when you exceed those default values through an auto sizing calculation in the software uh, that you would trigger hers verification so um, we're still waiting to see what the language and the standards is going to be, but we're thinking that um, it's going to be something like an auto sizing feature in the software for a default value. Anything uh, higher than that, then you would have to uh, have a HERS verification. So um, we're not going to change these features here. 48,000 BTUs per hour output, sensible is 33.6. Uh, efficiency 14 sear and we're going to change this to a 12.2 EER unit so we're good for our HVAC system we're not changing the distribution uh, keeping everything the same we're not changing um, any HERS verifications uh, just keep everything as is let's so we've changed our HVAC system to all electric let's go and change our domestic hot water heater to all electric so I am on the DHW tab uh, at the um, at the plant level here. So you can see we have a uh, tankless water heater specified. Um, so what I want to do is uh, I, I usually just copy these and I want to do a um, actually I'm going to do a NIA uh, heat pump water heater. So it looks like Chandra um, asked a question. Why does the 12.2 EER trigger a HERS verification if it's a mandatory minimum? Um, that's funny, Chandra. The software assumes 11.7 ER um, based on a, a larger capacity system up to five ton. Um, it's just a characteristic of the uh, ACM um, alternate computer method um, manual. The, so it says that uh, it used the 11.7. If you select the 12.2 with Energy Pro, it automatically triggers a HERS verification. If you're using CBEC Res, it doesn't trigger HERS verification unless you 
request it. There's a button in there. So just the different characteristics of the software. All right, we're going to go to a heat pump water heater. Um, let's see. Uh, we are going to, excuse me for just a second here. Um, we want to use the, uh, oh, that's why. We want to use the NIA rated heat pump. Uh, NIA stands for, um, gosh, somebody help me out there. I always forget what that stands for. Um, something Energy Efficiency Alliance. I can't remember offhand. Uh, we'll take a look at that in a second. So if we're importing a NIA rated heat pump, uh, we go to the import. Thank you very much for that. Northwest Energy Efficiency, and it's Alliance, right? Yeah, good. Northwest Energy Efficiency Alliance. So if you input this from Energy Pro's directory, if you check the NIA rated heat pump, um, it's going to give you all of the NIA um, heat pumps here that uh, are certified. So I'm going to go down and uh, we're going to use a state, um, this HPX50 DHP120. You see this one has a um, uh, UEF of 2.9. If you're not familiar with UEF, it's universal energy factor versus um, EF, which is energy factor. I'm going to select that. Automatically checks the UEF rated um, energy factor there. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Um, why don't we also do a uh, distribution credit on this? Um, is everybody familiar with the compact um, distribution, hot water distribution credit? If not, um, what I want to do is share with you from the residential compliance manual um, the distribution system credits, just so you're familiar with what these are. You should be seeing the Energy Code ACE reference ACE here. So I'm in Chapter 5 under 5.6 distribution credits. And we're going to go down to... Um, Scroll down here to compact, verified compact design. So what the premise of this is, is limiting the amount of distance of the hot water based on the size of the house. So you can, you can see here based on table 5-10, we're going to be limiting the distance uh, from that heat source based on the size of the house. So Eric's question is, how do you model the... Colmac heat pump water heater, which doesn't have an EF or UAF. Eric, I'm not sure, I'm not familiar with the Colmac uh, heat pump. Um, maybe we could, uh, you could type your email address in there and uh, I can contact you offline on that one. That's a good question. I'll have to take a look at that. So, um, back to our Oh yeah, private private message me your email. Um, maybe um, um, Lindsay, you could put my email address up there. I'm fine with that. So and uh, just message me an email. So our house is um, between uh, 1,600 and 2,200 square foot. That gives us a total distance of 53 feet. So we just need to make sure that the uh, distance from our source right here um, to our longest, our furthest fixture um, is less than that distance here, right? Okay, so we're gonna go back to Energy Pro here. We've collect, uh, checked the compact HERS distribution. Uh, we're gonna run this analysis here uh, in just a second. And uh, does anybody have any predictions on whether or not we're going to comply? Now we've switched from a, a 92 AFUE furnace and a 14 SEER 1170 ER air conditioner. We had a tankless uh, water heater. I believe that was in the 95 energy factor range. 
Um, so we're switching over to all electric. Does anybody have any guesses whether it's going to comply or not? And Luke, uh, looks like, um, so Olivier says horizontal distance only. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to that. While this is analyzing, let's go back to the res compliance manual and uh, we'll take a look at that. Let me go back to the screen here. So, um, so you would look in a reference appendices uh, uh, RA4416 for all the requirements. But um, typically, uh, this system is, um, so you can see here, compact hot water design uh, can be useful to help uh, achieve the rigor energy budget. This is going to be a HERS triggered. Um, specifies the maximum pipe run length that meets the co compact design criteria. So it's talking about the pipe run length. Let's go to the RA4416 uh, uh, This is basically what it's saying here is that uh, the floor area so we looked up on the table uh, based on the floor area the length from the water heater to the furthest use point it serves shall be equal to or less than what's in the table measurement shall be made to the nearest half foot um, this is a horizontal distance measurement so uh, there may be some uh, differences with the uh, run length of the pipe uh, running to it but um, C says hot water distribution system piping from the water heater to the fixtures and plants uh, must take the most direct path so you can't snake it in and out of walls going from the floor to the ceiling um, it's really um, a, a point of use credit so the most direct path from the water heater in this case would most likely be uh, from the source let me go back to our uh, our floor plan here uh, from the source which is going to be probably in the garage here um, over to the farthest point and we're going to make the linear dimension from here over to here is uh, 45 feet. So we're within our 53 foot maximum run. We just need to have that HERS verified and uh, we're good to go. All right, let's take a look at uh, our solution here. The analysis is done. And uh, before I switch over to the screens, uh, any predictions? Does uh, did anybody put any predictions in the chat window, whether it's going to comply or not? Yeah. Good. Uh, Olivier says not complying. Compare electric to gas. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. So we can see our original uh, model was a little over 6% savings. And we went from 6% up to 16%. So um, a portion of that was um, we uh, did the compact hot water distribution credit. And we also looked at um, changing to a, a NEA water heater, which is going to give you much better values than a non-NEA rated water heater. So um, if you have a non-NEA rated water heater, you might be, uh, you know, uh, experiencing you know smaller savings on there so uh, let's take a look at our um, results compliance results here and make sure that we modeled everything right so we're seeing 16.8 percent um, newly constructed we can see our special features here we got a NEA rated heat pump so saying that it has to be equivalent or better um, Nothing else changed here. Let's go down to um, our HVAC system type and water heater type. Um, I'm on page seven of nine of the CF1R Perfo one. We can see that um, we've got a split heat pump indicated here, uh, an HSPF of 8.2. Um, our 47 degree and 17 degree heating capacity is input from uh, Energy Pro and then here's our cooling efficiency here uh, we also have uh, let's see um, we've got our heat pump water heater 
It's a 50 gallon NIA rated. Um, and here's our make and model number over here. So um, this, uh, you know what? Uh, this was a previous run. Um, I apologize. I actually have, uh, we updated that to um, our credit. So this was actually run without the credit. Um, so you could probably imagine that our savings fraction is going to get a little bit higher uh, with that distribution credit. So good. So everything looks good on the CF1R. I'd be uh, ready to go to send this off to the client for approval. Um, in that case, good. Let's uh, go ahead and jump into our next um, scenario here. I'm going to be looking at changing uh, the system type to a combined hydronic system. Now, a little bit of setup on this is, um, you know, you might have a, a, a client request uh, some specific information or specific system type. So in this case, um, we've got um, our hypothetical client sent this brochure for a Polaris American water heater, um, a, a water heater system. Um, little disclaimer, we're not endorsing any products or recommending any, any specific product, but we're using this for illustration purposes. Um, their mechanical uh, contractor um, said, look, we're going to be using this make and model number unit. Um, so what we want to do is look up in the AHRI directory uh, for um, all of our input information. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over to uh, that screen. Let's take a look at our AHR AHRI. Now, based on this information, um, this particular model of water heater doesn't fit in the residential category because of the um, the input and the size of that. So uh, we're going to go to the commercial water heaters and you're going to find this down here. Um, now, another little tip for searching for products, if we know the um, model number, uh, usually I don't select the brand name. I just type in the first few letters of the model number. So in this case, I'm going to type in PG10. I'm going to do a search. How are we doing on um, chat questions? Lindsay, anything come up? Yeah. Oh, cool. So Luke and Eric are talking amongst themselves. That's awesome. Um, so here's our results. We got uh, American water heater. Uh, we're gonna. We got a bunch of them here. We got the PG 1034. We're actually looking at the PG 1050 130. So it's a 50 gallon, 130. 1000 BTU input. So that's this one right here. You can see uh, Cool, I think we got something in the chat window coming up here um, Goodness, are there not issues with heat pump water heaters room size external heating requirements? exhausting cold air um, Yeah, there there is a location of that heat pump water heater um, you need to make sure it's in the right location. Um, there are some issues with, uh, you know, the byproduct of extracting uh, heat and putting that into water is you're going to get cold air. So um, there are um, different location points that you need to input from uh, into Energy Pro in order to identify that. So you could, uh, for example, um, go, let me go back to Energy Pro. That's a good question uh, from, looks like Girder Truss. I'm not sure who that is, but um, you can see residential heat pump water heaters. I had already selected uh, it from the garage, but you could put it inside the house. Um, you can actually, if you had a separate room or zone, you could identify that zone. You could put it outside the house. You could put it in the crawl space. You could put it in the attic. So various locations. I had already defaulted to the garage where the water heater was located. So, all right. Um, Back to um, our alternative system here. So what we want to do is first we want to identify that the HVAC system type is going to be using the domestic hot water system to provide the heat, right? So we're going to be using a domestic hot water boiler.
to provide the heat for our system. We're going to identify that in, in just a minute, but we're going to go into our DHW system uh, on the DHW tab. We're going to input a new boiler or new water heater. So I'm just going to copy this one. Um, we're going to input the information from the information we got back from the AHRI directory. So we're going to say this is a um, Polaris. Would I say this was a, a PG 10 50 132 NV 200. It's a 50 gallon. Uh, we're going to put our input rating at 130,000 BTUs. Our, uh, we're going to select EF because our AHRI directory came back uh, in uh, thermal efficiency. So we're going to input from HR directory, it's 95. Oops. Um, and it's not NIA rated, and this is a uh, gas fired, right? So 5130.95. Now we need to take a look at our standby loss here. Um, if you look at the AHRI directory, um, that particular system uh, has a standby loss in BTUs per hour of 750, right? But our software is looking at standby loss in a percentage or a decimal. So what we need to do is look at what the standby loss is uh, overall. Um, very simple calculation. Take that 750 uh, BTU or, BTUs per hour and divide it by the input rate. So 130,000 BTUs going to give us a 0 0.0058 standby loss factor. So we're going to input that into our standby loss, 0 0.0058. Uh, and that's good for our water heater. We're going to say OK. Now we're going to go back to our HVAC system type. Now remember, we had a heat pump here, which would probably be the appropriate system type. Our clients want to keep the AC. So the AC portion is going to remain as is. Um, but we need to change our heating, our heating type from a heat pump to water, heat, hot water. So that's going to be the source. That's going to tell the software that the water heater is, uh, there's a, a coil loop in that water heater, and that's going to be our source for our heating rather than the heat pump. Uh, our cooling is going to remain the same. So we're going to select that. We're going to go over here and change our distribution system uh, for our heating distribution only is going to be radiant floor. So they're going to run coils uh, in that slab and the uh, cooling distribution is still going to be ducted in the attic so it might be a redundant system but we're gonna we're just gonna say that's good for now uh, this is probably more along the line of a, of a pretty expensive system now something else that's required here now we've changed our system types from um, from a, a heat pump water heater to this new high efficiency um, combined hydronic water. We've changed our HVAC system type and distribution to be a radiant floor for the heating. Uh, but we need to go back in and change the slab. So we need to go back into the envelope. Uh, currently, we just have a non-heated slab. So what we need to do is import a heated slab. And we need to go to the JA4 table 448. Now, the standards say R5 perimeter insulation 16 inches in depth or the bottom of the footing, whichever is less. So we need to select at least this R5 16 inch uh, value here. Um, if you don't select, if you select anything less than that, uh, then you're going to get an error. Software is going to say that doesn't work. Um, I'm going to change this from a slab on grade to a heated slab on grade value. And we can see on the JA4 table, that the construction of this is a heated slab, R5 perimeter, 16 inch uh, in depth, and we're gonna select okay. 
Good. All right. Um, any predictions on this? Uh, we went from uh, our previous scenario um, back to um, a gas water heater, but change your HVAC system type to um, in-floor radiant heat. So uh, our previous analysis was done. We we're at 6% from our uh, episode two. Um, we saw our savings jump up quite a bit for that all electric option. Any predictions? I'm going to give you guys a second to type that in. All right, no guesses yet. That's fine. We'll we'll go ahead and uh, do our bit. Uh, Olivier says it, it'll comply. Any uh, any guess on what kind of um, compliance margin or percent better than standard? Okay. Well, if not, no problem. Let's go ahead and look at our solution for option two. And here we are. Our savings are for. Uh, 12.4% better than standard. Wow, what a huge jump. Now, again, this may not be the most practical system, but you may have uh, clients primarily in the cooler climate zones. I know I have I have several clients in, let's say, climate zone 16 uh, that go with a radiant in-floor heating. So let's take a, take a look at our compliance documentation, make sure that everything looks good to go. Um, we haven't changed anything on the envelope other than our slab edge. Uh, we're seeing the uh, special features come up with slab edge and heated slab. So that's a good, good indication there. No other um, good. No other uh, hers verifications. So let's go down to our slabs slab floors so we're seeing slab um, call out that it's heated so we're good there our insulation edge our value is r5 the depth is 16 inches so that's good hvac system now we're looking at a uh, large gas water heater so it's 50 gallon storage it has a thermal efficiency of 0.95 input rating 130,000 btus and a standby loss uh, of uh, what 0.58 percent or 0.0058 so we're good to go there our cooling didn't change but we can see our heating HVAC system type is combined hydronic efficiency is 95 and uh, I think we're good to go on this one good so option two done looks like um uh, looks like Michelle had a had a comment here. Good morning, Michelle. Um, love seeing climate zone 16 and all it acknowledge. Yeah, uh, Michelle up in the foothills there. Uh, you probably see more projects in climate zone 16 than I do these days. But uh, good to good to see that you're logged in, Michelle. All right, good. So option two done. Any questions so far? Um, if so, type those in the chat window. I'm going to go ahead and go to our option three here. I'm going to kind of minimize a few screens here. Um, and option three is going to be looking at um, our uh, solar thermal system. So what we want to do is go back. Now, why don't I go ahead and let's see. I need to add, uh, close this up real quick. I'm not going to save this. I'm going to go back to a previous previous version. So let me switch my. You guys can get a little view here um, of what I'm doing on my desktop. So no no fancy studios here. This is where I work uh, day to day. So um, you can see I've got a couple monitors set up and how we're doing stuff here. Um, so what I did is open my episode three base file again. So this is going to be adding solar thermal to our existing uh, tankless water heater system. So let me switch back to the right screen. So we're looking at the plant level of our um, model house here. Um, domestic hot water tab. Um, let me switch it 
back to our tankless unit. Okay, so HVAC system, we're going to change this back to uh, not hydronic. Distribution is going to be ducted. Sorry guys, I should have had this all prepared for you. We're going to go back to uh, heat pump. Good. We should be all reset here. Um, <clears throat> what we want to do is take a look at where the inputs are for uh, solar domestic hot water. Um, you'll see here on the DHW tab, uh, solar domestic hot water net solar fraction. So this is a percentage um, and it's based on how much hot water that solar system is going to provide on an annual basis. So what I want to do is take you to the the uh, solar the solar rating certification here and uh, give me just a second here let me queue it up. So Solar Rating and Certification Corporation, um, we want to take a look at finding a system that's going to get us uh, you know, a fairly decent solar savings fraction. Now, if you have make and model number um, already identified by, let's say, plumbing contractor or HAC contractor, uh, that's great. Um, uh, that is going to get you a lot closer but what we want to do here is take a look at the OG 300 solar water heating system certifications now we're looking at systems the entire system that's certified um, not looking at individual built-up systems now there is a way to do that um, but uh, we're not going to be doing that in this episode so what we want to do is set our location this project happens to be located in climate zone 12 here in Central California. So we're going to set our location there. Um, we're going to set the, um, the request type. Um, this is a, let's say it's a pumped system rather than a thermosiphon system. Our backup source is going to be a gas tankless water heater. Uh, we want U.S. units. So what this is going to do, I'm not, I haven't selected uh, a company or brand name. I'm just going to search all systems that are rated uh, in this climate zone. So you can see it's going to give me back results, uh, quite a few results here uh, on systems. Um, they range from uh, savings fraction, uh, wow, 99%. That's crazy. That's uh, that's quite that's a 54 square foot array. That's um, that's amazing. I highly doubt our clients are going to be able to afford that system. Uh, let's pick something a little bit more reasonable. Let's say uh, a 64 percent savings fraction. Do you guys think that's a, a reasonable amount? Um, uh, maybe even a little bit less. Maybe I saw one over here in the 50s. How about 56? Right. This Ream Soul Pack. Uh, we're going to go there and take a look at the certified values for that product. It takes a, little, a second for that to generate. We're going to get a PDF of the certified uh, solar system for that. You're going to see here on the front page that this has a single day rating, solar fraction of 0.48. We're not looking at the single day rating. We're looking at the annual savings. So you got to go to uh, page two, annual rating in California climate zone 12 uh, we have a solar savings fraction of 0.56 actually that's not the one that I used in my demonstration let's go ahead and go back and redo that because I want to use one we're going to do climate zone 12 rating type is pumped backup type is gas tankless we're going to do this one more time. I think I used the 0.65 value, this one. So just in case you're wondering, um, if I hit the calculate button in Energy Pro, it takes all my system resources and shuts down my live stream. So that's why I'm not actually running the calculation. So here's our annual savings, solar savings fraction, 0.65. 
we're going to enter that in a percentage here. Six, so what we're saying is 65% of that hot water demand is going to be provided by our new solar thermal system. Uh, I'm going to take compact off because we didn't run that in the simulation. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and run this. Uh, any predictions of what our savings is going to be? All right. Remember, we're going to count up who has the most chats today. And they're going to get one of these awesome mugs mailed to them. So you guys can see that. So it says Code and Coffee on one side. And energy code ace on the other side so now's your chance we're gonna be wrapping up here pretty quick so now's your chance to get some uh, extra chats in so let's go ahead and go to our solution for uh, this third option here and take a look at our results uh, you can see <laughs> Chandra says savings will go up um, I think that's a pretty good prediction what do you guys think so we went from 6% um, and our new total here, uh, it, we're seeing uh, right around almost 11%, 10.9% savings. So let's take a look at our compliance doc documentation. Let's make sure that we got everything identified right. So um, we're seeing in our special requirements, our special features on page two of the CF1R Perfo 1, solar water heating credit, single family building special features so good we shouldn't see any other credits here um, but let's go down to our domestic hot water system water heating system page seven of nine we're seeing water heating is uh oh i did include the compact distribution credit on that one uh, along with a 65 percent solar savings fraction so so there you go. Our compliance documentation is accurate. It uh, actually modeled what we thought it was going to model. Um, we're good to go send this to the client for their approval. Uh, obviously, all of these versions uh, that are options that we did require HERS verifications, which also requires that the documentation be registered with a HERS provider. So maybe that would be a, a good... Um, episode anybody interested in doing a register this document documentation with a hers provider episode if so uh type type in that chat window there's one more opportunity to get in uh some extra chats in there so good well uh looks like we have a question here let me uh bring up looks like uh olivier says uh in the SSF climate dependent uh, SSF solar savings fraction oh is the solar savings fraction climate dependent yes it is climate dependent so let me go back to um, our um, our um, SRCC directory um, if you remember when I uh, searched for that information I searched for uh, a climate specific system right so uh, just keep in mind if you go to the directory you can look up thermal uh, collect solar thermal collectors um, this is the uh, OG 100 certifications we want the OG 300 certification those are climate specific annual solar savings fractions and when you search for this information uh, you're going to change the location to the specific location uh, where you're at so you can see all the climate uh, California climate zones here 1 through 16 so if you're let's say uh, climate zone 7 down in San Diego you're looking for the same system type um, that particular make and model number may have a different uh, solar savings fraction so uh, than it was so each of these have been designed and simulated to run in each of these uh, climate zones so energy pro doesn't calculate the return on investment for uh, solar thermal um, I guess you could do the econ one calculation 
uh, and run the calculation with and without the solar thermal. Never tried it though. I guess that uh, that might be something for you to try out when you uh, run some of these. So good. Um, looks like we've covered this. Michelle says, from my perspective, the HERS registration has been getting easier. At least I can find documents to sign out. That's awesome. Good. So Michelle is an architect, um, works with other energy consultants. Uh, they upload their compliance documentation, notify her when to sign off and approve documentation. So that's good that you're having some success with that. I know uh, it has been um, a struggle for some people getting people to log into the HERS provider to do that. But good, that's that's good. So let's see, Energy Pro, we got the Energy Pro calculate return on investment question. Uh, hey, Jim, you're welcome. Let's see, Jim. Signed in there, and Olivier uh, looks like uh, that's a response to the uh, SRCC website uh, question there. Good. Well, that's a wrap for today. Looks like we finished in under an hour. Um, I'm going to be looking at these uh, live chats, see who got the most here. Um, we'll stay on line for a few minutes, but we're going to call that... Um, a, uh, a wrap. I'm going to put up my goodbye screen here. Just a couple of things I'd like to plug are um, our Energy Code Ace tools. If you haven't been to the Energy Code Ace website, um, there are some wonderful tools and resources there that you can download. This is all free. This is this website provides free tools, resources, training, all through the auspices of the CPUC and the investor-owned uh, utilities. So. Uh, you see down there, PG&E, SoCal Edison, uh, the gas company, SDG&E. All those form the statewide codes and standards team, and um, they provide all this for you. So check them out. Um, we also have some wonderful online self-study courses, residential online self-study courses that we've just posted, along with some uh, workshops that go with them. So our next workshop is going to be on HVAC systems and Chandra and I uh, are going to be delivering that, I believe, next week. So it's not too late to go sign up for that. Um, make sure that you do the, uh, the homework ahead of time and go through the uh, mechanical online self-study classes uh, too. So good. Well, that's it for our show today. Um, hoping to uh, get shows on here more frequently than uh, the past. But I want to thank you for uh, tuning in. And uh, for those of you who tuned into the live broadcast, thank you very much. Uh, great chat uh, uh, activity there. So, all right. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.